Okay, let's actually discuss uh, uh, how this equation is going to be discretized using finite difference. So you would still have du dt here, right? But then you have, let's say, at step n, you have un times the spatial derivative, which can be approximated using whatever scheme we have learned. Okay? In this case, uh, we can actually gain some experience from looking at the linear equations. And we know that, okay, we have to approximate this uh, uh, spatial derivative using an upwind manner, right? Using an upwind manner means that uh, if the wave is coming from the left, I should use a left biased derivative. If the wave is coming from the right, I should use a right biased derivative. And how do I know if the wave is coming from the left or the right? Look at the coefficient before the spatial derivative. So then this is going to be delta x. And uh, there is an option, right? You can, this is either un plus 1 minus un or un minus un minus 1. And which do I choose depending on what un is? If un is positive, I choose this one, right? If un greater than 0. And if un is negative, I choose that one. All right, so this is how we apply what we learned in the linear scenario to a nonlinear equation like this, right? And it works. Well, it works until we actually have a shock wave. And this lecture is going to be a walkthrough of uh, basically uh, what happens when we have a nonlinear partial differential equation, which is usually what we are uh, dealing with in, in a lot of scenarios. And uh, uh, and uh, uh, why finite difference would be actually a good way to solve it if there is no shock waves. And uh, how can we remedy that when we do have shock waves? Okay. So, so uh, the reason I'm saying this is not a very good uh, scheme to use when we have shock waves is because uh, uh, if we have a, what do we mean by we have a shock wave? We have a shock wave when we have x and u, and the solution is look like looks like that. And uh, if we're trying to approximate uh, a first order derivative using a scheme like this, and when the first order derivative doesn't even exist. At this point, uh, what are we doing here, right? And furthermore, what's making things worse is that we know the approximation error of this is on the order of O delta x squared, right? For if you have a first order scheme. But that's not the point. The point is the delta x squared is multiplied by something. If you do Taylor series analysis, you are going to know that the O delta x squared is multiplied uh, typically by the second order derivative of the solution. And what's the second order derivative here? It's pretty much infinity, right? Okay, if you have a second order scheme, your residual, your approximation error is proportional to the third order derivative of the solution. What's the third order derivative here? So basically, if you use finite difference scheme here, you're going to be doing pretty well in all the regions uh, away from the shock wave. And whenever you have a shock wave, the result is totally unpredictable in the sense that you, your approximation error is order one. And the, I mean, if you get a good solution, you are lucky. If you don't get get a good solution, well, that's what you <laughs> That's what you have chosen. So, so that's that's what happens with uh, with uh, uh, with finite difference for this kind of uh, nonlinear differential equations. But uh, before we discuss uh, what we can do to remedy that. Uh, let's actually uh, try to solve this equation uh, using the same scheme we have uh, used before. Okay. So I'm going to copy the same final difference code uh, we wrote last Monday. And uh, uh, do dt equal to diffusion. Okay. So let's just call it burgers. 
That's the Burgers equation. And uh, uh, we don't need the second or the derivative, at least for now. Uh, the one without uh, the second or the derivative is uh, called the invisible Burgers equation. Uh, so let's comment this out. And we also don't have an A. So du dt is going to be equal to minus, so what is it? Minus u times du dt, right? And we need a dot product here because uh, in MATLAB, that means I'm going to be multiplying the corresponding entries of the vector u with the corresponding entries of the vector du dt. OK? So um, OK, instead of this initial condition, which is uh, <laughs> discontinuous to start with, let's actually start with something a bit nicer. So let's start from a very smooth solution, a sinusoidal wave. How about that? I have n equal to this, and my u0 is, uh, let me first uh, figure out what is my x. My x is uh, uh, this, and uh, let's see, my x is this, and then I'm going to set my u0 corresponding to x. u0 is going to be sine of x times 2 times pi. How about that? So I have a sinusoidal, sinusoidal wave. All right. And uh, let's actually evolve this for only a little bit. OK. And uh, I'm going to plot it. So uh, let's actually, yeah, let, let's, let's do this first and uh, look at what the solution looks like. 